I'm going to try and repair this Vinidex HST S160 electrofusion unit. Apparently, it's giving some errors. I've already tested it myself just to confirm those errors. I'll show you those in a second. So, apparently, it comes up with error one, then when you do it again, it comes up with error two. Now, error one is supposed to be a power supply failure or power supply issue, and error two is a welding failure because it can't detect the coil. Here, you can see I've got it hooked up to my 20 ohm resistor. This is a 1000 watt resistor, so plenty capable of handling it. This does 500 watts. I'm going to power it up, show you the errors that come up, and show you what happens, and then we'll try and figure out what's going on. All right, let's power it up. See, error one, so we'll clear that. If I try and do a weld, error two. So error two means it can't sense the coil. Now I've got this plugged in with these leads here into the connectors on the cable. The cable comes right across here. And that's going to my resistor. So that should be seeing that resistive load. That's 20 ohms that's set to. Those are nice positive connections. I know they're definitely plugged in properly. So even if those were loose on the coil or something when they're plugged in on the fitting and they used to weld on. If those were loose then it would be a problem. But because I've got good connections on these I know that isn't an issue. Which means it's likely a broken wire or some internal fault. So we need to figure out which one of those it is. We'll power it back off and unplug it. We're going to have to open it up. These leads are quite nice, they're quite chunky leads, so I'm quite surprised if these have failed. They're quite robust. Right, they actually feel quite good, but they could still be a break here. It's entirely possible. Give that a pull, not seeing anything. Try giving this one a pull. Not seeing anything. Well, that one does feel slightly more solid. So it doesn't feel quite as solid, but I don't know, it may not even be that end, it might even be this end. Don't know. It may not even be that. So we'll pull it apart and have a look. So if you haven't seen my previous videos on electrofusion units, there's a playlist which will be linked at the end of this video and possibly even down in the description or I may even link it up there somewhere in the corner of the video. I may do that too. And basically what they do is they melt a fitting which is on a pipe. So polyethylene pipes cannot be glued, they have to be welded. It's called butt welding. And they use these electrofusion units to heat up a coil which is basically a big resistor inside a pipe fitting. And it melts the pipe and a the pipes are pushed together at the same time under pressure and it makes sure it gets a nice good consistent weld. These are cat two screws although one of them came out. And that's the idea that then makes one pipe instead of having individual pipes. So they joined. This is pretty tight to get out. Stiff wires and stuff like that. There's connections right there so the wires go in like this. So you guess what the inside looks like. So the first thing I'm looking at here is got these capacitors here. They're not domed, they look fine. So electrically they're probably okay. Not likely to be a failure. These do have venting ability on them, so you've got those slots in the top, these depressions. So if they do fail though, usually these will bulge. Not all cats will bulge, some have got solid tops and they don't bulge, they'll just spit the bottom out instead. But these ones will bulge if they fail, most likely. So we've got a relay here, it says TMS, which is a sensor, it's a current sensor wire passes through that. So these are the welding wires here. They go out that cable. Then we've got a, that'd be a temperature sensor here which comes around, plugs in over here, because that's a sense the ambient temperature to adjust the times of the welding. So if it's colder it'll weld for longer to compensate for that, because it has to get a good welding joint. We've got an auto coupler down here, a little buzzer which you can hear when we're panning thing up, a couple of adjustments which have been sealed so they can't unscrew from vibration. A couple of MOSFETs or something over here it looks like. Just want to see if I can see what they are. Can't get the lighting on them right. Probably MOSFETs anyway. And the transformer here and there's some potted thing over here which is probably another transformer. And there's the back there with the electrical connections. So there's not a huge amount to see there. Pretty simple devices really. So obviously this is the microcontroller which is running the whole thing. Quite a big thing. Quite surprised by that. Programming header here, I'm not going to mess with any of that. And it's like there's a pass through header here, which probably goes through to the display board, probably a separate board. No, it's not. I don't know where that's going to then. Can't see. We'll test these connections right here from one end to the other and we'll see if it's got an open. Nice, right, so I'm set up to do this testing. Let's see what we get. So I've got the meter set up to continuity mode. I'm going to shove a probe in one of these, like that, and check the other end, see if we can get a signal. Nothing that one. Nothing that one. Well, that seems pretty 
Luckily then that, that's the one that's just broken. That's pretty good. Let's try the yellow one. Nothing. That one's working. Okay, so it's that one there and the black one which is not working. Shut that in again. Just make sure. Yep, yeah, definitely broken wire. Excellent. We'll fix that. So now you've got to find out where the wire is broken. So now we've got should have a connection between each end of this right now. So we'll try here. Nothing there. Let's try the other end. Uh oh, here we go. It's this end. So which means I'm going to cut this end off and rewire the whole piece. Not that big a deal, but slightly different one. You know, normally it's this end with the cable which goes, but these are quite good cables. But it seems that the stress on this end wasn't very good. I seem bent over or something in the case, maybe, I don't know. There's actually like a depression on here actually, see if I can show you that. So here you go, a close up, and there's like a little mark just here. So maybe it's been hit by something, maybe it's been physically damaged by something hitting it. Maybe it's had something put down on it, it's and it's bent over and squashed it here and dug a bit of the insulation out, and that's what it looks like. It's a bit hard to see, but that is damage right where the brake is, so to me that seems a bit coincidental. Probably physical damage. So in order to fix this, we need to strip all this piece apart and get that out and fit it through and put a new piece in. Well, I'm going to use the original cable also, I'll just shorten it a little bit. It's not a big deal. But obviously you've got to go through this um, current sensor, stuff like that. Go, go through in a correct direction, so you have to make sure the cable comes through from the inner edge, well from the outside, through to the inside, back over. So I mustn't forget to get that correct, because I'm, obviously I'm going to have to disconnect these and um, push the whole thing through again do it again. Not a big deal, but I need to make sure that you get the current sensing direction correct, because it could matter, otherwise it might not work properly. So let's get this thing stripped down. So it's the gland. It could even be broken right here because of the gland, it could even be possible because of that being squashed in here. That's created some stress just there, I mean it could even be that which caused the problem. It's possible. Um, so I'm going to pull it out and then I'll cut it all off, fit it through again with a new piece which is matched to the, what I cut off. So we need to get these wires out here. Now this isn't a screw terminal, this is the press terminal, so these have got little spring clips inside them. So you have to push in into that top hole and it'll push a little lever down which clamps onto the wire. So I need to try and sort of get this all out of the way so I can show you. Hopefully I can do it without blocking the camera too much. So you got to start stripping us back where we've got one done. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So it's kind of put a really slight, just a really small neck down that, got like this. Doesn't have to be much. You have to go right through just to score it. And then you can get the wire to rip it open. Just like that. So I need to go down to right here. In order to get that to where I want it to be. Of course you've got to be careful not to cut through and damage the actual wire itself. So now I'm going to cut this piece off. That's the length I need. Like that. There we go. So that's Basically, this piece replicated. It's the bobby. Once I've finished doing it, all right. Pretty easy, really. It's not too complicated. So after thread that through, and I'm going to do the same orientation. So the black lines on the bottom. So it's the same way round. Going to do basically exactly the same as factory. So it should be identical to factory. Move it up. So we should have enough wire sticking out here to get the wires on. So might you push slightly more through? just to get the insulation pushed through into the box. So I'll try and show you that. See it's just just in there, which is how the original one was like that. So I'll put it in the same place. Lock this down by hand, I'll get onto it with a spanner afterwards and get it nice and tight so it beds in. So now I can get these wires on. So that one goes through the inside like that. Then loops back around. All right, and then goes into there, and then that one just needs to be put on to there, and we're done. Okay, so the wire's prepared, ready to go in. So now I'm to kind of wedge this up so I can get into it there and hold the thing up the whole time. Okay, so that's the top one, so that will go in here. 
This one's the one that goes straight out. So I'm to get my probe again into here and try and press that in as I did before. Just got to reverse the process. So making sure these are twisted around nicely. So spread off like the factory ones did. So we shove that in there, push that down, shove the wire in. Like that. Release it, give it a tug. That's good. That's it. Well, yeah, unfortunately my hand was in the way of the camera. Of course it was, but you know, can't do much about that. Now I've got to do the same thing with the second one, just here. And I'm 90% sure this will fix the problem. You know, it was obviously an open. There may be a second fault because there was that error one as well, but that could just be because it's been confused by the world failure, or the fact that it's not detecting a coil attached when it first powers up or something. I, don't, I really don't know. So we'll find out. Push that in. Now it's open enough. I can see the opening in here, probably can't get it. down. Release it, give it a tug. Seems alright. Okay, that should actually power up and work. So we'll just give it a try before I put the top back on again. Just to get it lined up and sit in there like that. Let's give it a go. Right, let's plug it in, try it out. As you can see, I'm set up ready to go. So you can monitor it. Power on. Error one initially, great. So let's just do this again in case there is still a problem. Cool, no error one, that's gone. It says leads are connected, so it's recognised the coil is there. Let's start it and see what happens to the meter. 93 volts, it's running a bit low. This one's sitting a bit lower. 94 volts, 93, 94 volts, that thing ended up being. So well error because I stopped it, that's fine. So that's exactly as it should be, error 9. So that, that seems to be fixed now. Why the world voltage is a bit low, not sure. I wonder if that needs a tweak. This resistance should be doing 100 volts. So I think I should probably actually look at these adjustments on this thing and see if I can actually bring it up a little bit. I doubt it's going to be a calibration in the firmware. It's more likely to be a calibration based on those trimmers inside. I might have a look at that. All right, so I'm going to try adjusting the voltage on this. I think it's the top one here. That'd be my guess. You know, I think that the bottom one there is called R1. That's called R3. Now, if I was designing something like this, I want to be like a main reference voltage, and you know anything after that would be lower circuits. That's the way I'd lay things out anyway. So we'll try R3 first because that seems to make the most sense, and we'll see if we can get a voltage up on here. All right, let's give it a go. Let's get ready. I don't want to have this on for too long, so it is you know heating this thing up. So here's our three right here. I'll get the screwdriver right on there before I even try and do anything else. Pair it up. And then I'll push the start button once it's ready. It says it's connected. Off we go. Other way. Here we go. It's supposed to be 100 volts. We are going to sustain 98, so I might just do like 99. Here we go. It's in between. 99. So that's then the same. So that's then the same as the other units I've already tried. They're seeing about 98.2 volts or so. So that's seeing 99 is slightly higher. So it's in about the same ballpark. I think it's where it should be, really. It might depend on line voltage as well. If you've got high line voltage, it might be higher than that. That is at least calibrated now to have the correct output voltage because before it was too low. I mean, being at 92 or 93, as it was about 93 once it's warmed up a little bit, that's about 7% down, which is or set over 500 watts. Could actually do a mass on that, couldn't I? So that means it's putting out 432 watts into a 20 ohm load, especially in 500. So, yes, that's quite a significant difference. So, I left it a little while around to cool down. So, we'll do another world and make sure that you know, because this is obviously getting hot. So, I'll do another world, verify the voltage again is okay, about 99 volts or so. 99 volts on here across 20 ohms equals about 490 watts. The other units I did were about 488. So if we have 484 or so watts, something like that. So it's all in the same sort of region, so it should be good. So maybe, you know, that sort of outcome of about 490 watts or so is about right. But 430 watts is definitely way off. So it's a lot closer now than it was. So it's still a world, so it happens. And it's not complaining, so I already did this one, so let's reset it. Let's reboot it. Okay. 
Okay, do it again. 97, 98. It's about the same as the other one. I might actually increase it very slightly. Maybe a little bit too far. Back slightly, come on. There you go. I'll see it there. That will do. I'll call that a success. Let's have a look at the cable and see what actually failed. See whereabouts in that strain relief it actually failed. We'll put this back together first and we'll investigate this. Again, there's a detail on the back of it. A bit of information about the unit. If you want to look that up, up to you, I suppose. But I did notice it's got a foot missing off here. But it has this like drain hole in here anyway, so it's like if it does get any moisture in there, maybe it'll come out. Also, I suppose it could be ventilation as well. So I'm not really too worried about plugging it up, to be honest. Well, they do kind of want to keep water out, but um, it does need some kind of ventilation too. It does actually look like these holes are quite deep, they go right down, so it looks like it is designed to try and stop water getting in or out of it. Well, I can tell, it's a bit hard to see really. So, yeah, I don't know. But it should really have a foot in here. And I don't have anything to suit, so I do have some stick on feet, I could stick a stick on foot on here, but it probably won't stay on there anyway. Alright, let's find out exactly where on here it was broken, so it was a short wire of the two, so in this sleeve here, so what I'm going to do is slice down it, I'm not too worried about protecting it obviously, because this one doesn't actually matter. So we'll slice down it, we'll get the wire out, and we'll figure out exactly where the brake was. So that's where the crimp is. That's where the gland was holding onto it, right there, right? that's why it's all squashed. So you can see a dark spot right here. That's where the gland was, there's a dark spot. Stretch it. Yep, sinking right there. So right there is where it failed, just outside the gland. Cut it right there, and there we go. Burnt. As expected. No real surprises there, just outside the gland where it bends. That's another one fixed. Thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Get the bell icon to get notifications about new videos, otherwise YouTube will not tell you about them. YouTube probably won't email you about them because they've stopped doing emails. That's propagating across the network right now. Emails will stop for notifications. So make sure you do do that. Have a chat down in the comments. Check out links down below for the playlist for these Ecotherm, or in this case Vinidex, electrofusion units, and the videos at the end as well. Check those out too. I'll catch you next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.